just about a year and a half ago, I was so frustrated with the Board of Supervisors. I know many of you are taking action by appearing there, and it's very important to do so. It was so clear that the Board of Supervisors was violating the law, as they continue to do. There is a law on the books called uh, California Health and Safety Code 101080. It was a law that was written to govern our legislature in the times of an emergency. During an emergency, the county has to either uh, ratify or terminate the local health emergency. And they determine whether to keep it going or to terminate it based on the information that they receive from the health officer. The law states that they are required to get updates no less than every 30 days. They could have updates daily. And wouldn't you think in the time of a dire emergency that they would be having updates daily, maybe even 24 seven, but they were not getting these updates. In fact, they never even, after a period of time, they stopped even putting the updates on the agenda. And the Board of Supervisors all agreed that they were no longer going to receive these updates about the local health emergency in Orange County. And they were just going to wait, and I quote, for the governor to tell them what to do. They also uh, put themselves on record as frauds by saying that if they were to cancel the emergency, they would not get any more emergency funding. And they all looked around the table and said, yeah, it wouldn't really change anything if we canceled the emergency because there's no mask requirement. There's no vaccine requirement to get into stores and so forth. So the only reason we're keeping the emergency going is to get the emergency funding. They said that it's on tape. So it's so clear that they're violating this law that I told them that I was going to bring legal action unless they started to vote on this as the law requires. And they completely rejected my statement. And uh, that was when I pursued legal action and I filed my lawsuit. It's not for money. In fact, it's costing me a lot of money because that is the only technique that they have is to stall, to obfuscate justice. And I will let you know that the, I have a video called, I predicted this would happen. And I go through it step by step in terms of the four different judges that were assigned and then removed from my case, the four or five different hearing dates that were canceled and postponed for several weeks again and again and again, because the judge said he didn't have time to read my case. There's nothing to read. Here's the law, they're violating it. And the first judge, gave us our win and said, you're exactly right. The county is violating the law. And they told the county, you have to put this meeting on the agenda and you come back to this courtroom in three months and you show me that you have it on the agenda or why you don't have to follow the law. That's where we are. And every time we go back to court, there's a new judge assigned and that judge says, oh, this is far too complicated for me to understand. I didn't have time to read it. We're going to put this out another six weeks. You know and I know that they have already lost. If they were able to face the music, if they actually had any validity to their argument, which is, well, the governor tells us what to do. Friends, this is even a bigger issue than just putting the item on the agenda. This is giving over their legislative duties, their ministerial powers to the governor. No governor has the authority to make a law. No governor has the authority to tell a legislative body what to do, period. That is not in his um, ability. That is not within his legitimate authority. And that is why this lawsuit is so very important. Now, I'm not asking for any money from the county, but it is costing me money to continually go to court and be represented. It should have been a done deal. It's called a writ of mandate. It is a petition. I presented it to the judge. He should have signed it that day, ordering that county to put the item back on the agenda. End of story. The county should have done that. They could have done it quietly without any fanfare, but instead they doubled down in an attempt to bleed me dry, not only psychologically, which is why I'm not um, facing you today, because I've had, unfortunately, a um, health setback with some nerve pain that my holistic MD believes is because of the stress of this lawsuit. So because of that, I have cut back on my travel and my personal appearances for several months until I'm back up to speed. But I do want to let you know that I am marching this all the way to heaven. If you are able to support me, even $3, $5 would go a long way toward being able to fund this lawsuit. And the last hearing should be on February 27th. Now, isn't that interesting? Because the governor 
has declared that he will terminate our state of emergency, which is different than the local health emergency. He's going to terminate the state of emergency on February 28th. So don't you think that this county is going to push this out until February 27th. By the way, the last judge we had said, you know, I am acting on behalf of the county. Oh, I, I mean, excuse me, I didn't mean to say that. Okay, that's on the record that he said. So my conclusion is that the county has been pressuring these judges not to declare that we are right and that the county is wrong. And then when the governor says the emergency is over, the county will say, oh, the emergency is over. Okay, we're all done. It still does not uh, reduce their, uh, their guilt and their culpability because the judge still needs to rule on the question that we put before the court. And here's the simple question. Does the government have to follow the law that was written in, in an emergency during an emergency? That's what we're asking. Or is the law, is that just words on a piece of paper that can be changed at a board chairman's whim? That is the question. And we will get a declaratory judgment. And I hold a vision of complete victory. In fact, in the video that I have, uh, that I would love for you to see called, I predicted this would happen. I have already forgiven the board of supervisors. I have forgiven the attorneys, the county attorneys. I've even forgiven the health officer because I know in their heart of hearts, they are grateful for the legal action that I'm taking because I am standing up for their rights and their children's right, rights and their grandchildren's rights. I am standing up for the freedom and the rule of law in this country. That is what this lawsuit is about. The local health emergency is separate from the state of emergency. A state of emergency can only exist if there are enough counties in an emergency. And uh, that is why we've been working so hard for the county to legally and legitimately declare the termination of this local health emergency. I thank all of you who can help me. It's very simple. If you would like to, it's over at thehealthyamerican.org and you can click on the red donate button. Every single penny goes toward this lawsuit. And I know that I stand in victory and I'm grateful to have you on my side.